Thanks for the reminder. Thanks, Lori. All right, well, as the last few folks are coming in and joining us, we'll go ahead and introduce Josh and get started. A few reminders before we do get going. Uh, obviously, this meeting is being recorded, just like all of our other base camps. It will be available publicly on our website and our YouTube channel. Um, we'll be monitoring the chat. So if you have questions or comments, uh, please feel free to place them in the chat and we'll make sure that Josh sees them and that uh, your questions get answered. And we wanna remind you to stick around after the end of the presentation. We have a short survey for you to complete and uh, we appreciate the feedback that you provide us through those. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Josh, uh, Dr. Josh Adams. He's going to discuss the value of data collection and analysis tools in supporting research-based or research and project-based learning. Uh, he wants to discuss strategies, tools, and places to find support when implementing tools like Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Services in any course. So, Josh, take it away. All right, all right. Hey, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, everyone from uh, CTLE and, and everyone that... Uh, uh, decided to join today. I appreciate everyone being here. Um, I'm honored. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, maybe provide a bit of uh, uh, ideas, support for, for everyone out there, if, 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 if you're interested or not, on utilizing some uh, cloud resources in your, in your courses on a regular basis. These are a lot of resources that are uh, accessible from the main providers. Right now, it's just uh, Google and Azure, uh, but there are some other uh, uh, providers that do different things and offer up different uh, resources. So with that, I, I think what, we'll, what I'll do is I'll share my screen, show the, present, the, the brief pre pre presentation that I have, and then I'll kind of show a little bit of uh, uh, demo ideas that you could uh, possibly use. And I'll, I'll show you how to access a lot of the resources. So a second. <clears throat> okay. Great. How does the screen look on you guys is in any problems? No? Okay. So, why use uh, cloud in, you know, cloud resources in your courses? What, what kind of a benefit uh, is it to you? How does it help you? Well, I'm certain many of you probably are asking, you know, there's, there's a lot of work that's involved, um, you know, why should I be interested? Why should I care? I think most of us like the idea of uh, providing some type of project-based learning, right? Some type of um, uh, hands-on activities where students can interact uh, with, with concepts that we're trying to, uh, uh, to, to help ex explain, right? Uh, that experiential type of learning goes over really well in, 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 many, in many respects, right? Uh, there's a lot of different organizations out here. This is from um, uh, PBLWorks.org, uh, where, where they kind of talk about how uh, their focus is on project-based learning, how it helps students become better decision makers, right? Uh, gain uh, skills, uh, critical thinking. I think for most of us, that's really what we're trying to get them to do. Right? We're, we're really trying to get them to be uh, a bit more creative, problem solve no matter what uh, topic or subject that, 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 that we, uh, we enjoy uh, teaching, we want them to be able to, um, to, to really rise to the occasion uh, so that they can be uh, really, really good uh, functioning uh, skilled adults, right? So Cloud resources are, are some of those uh, tools that we can utilize today in this in this real advanced uh, you know uh, technological environment uh, to kind of help provide that type of experience uh, for students in, in many uh, 
many respects. So no matter what type of a program or course you're, you're delivering, you can typically find some type of, um, of a good project or uh, experiential type of learning uh, project that uh, students can kind of work on. One of the first ones I'll, I'll tell you about here will be Google. So Google provides uh, courses or credits, right? Credits are the, uh, the, the are essentially uh, financial uh, rental resources on, uh, or rental of the resources at usually at fifty dollars uh, for the students, and then a hundred dollars uh, for um, for any type of an instructor TA uh, or uh, uh, anyone that's a part of uh, whatever course that's being pre uh, presented. Uh, Azure is another one that we'll kind of talk about, and, and in fact, another one I'll. I'll provide a, a, brief, a brief information about will be Tableau as well. So from Google's perspective, they don't care what course you're in. Uh, if there's something that you can, uh, if there's some type of a resource that you can utilize, they're, they're willing to work with you and provide these credits. And uh, after this, after this little bit here, I'll show you actually how to access all that. Azure has a, a couple different things. There's, there's two programs we're doing now uh, at the university uh, for this. One, uh, we, we are a partner with, uh, with what used to be uh, Microsoft uh, DreamSpark, uh, but then became a DevTools for teaching. And so in this case, all students across the St. Leo campus and online worldwide have access to um, the Microsoft Azure environment. And all they really have to do to access this is, is go to the sign-in, which will bring them back to their St. Leo login. And once they log in through their St. Leo account as a single sign-on, they'll have access to a specific environment, which will also, also give them a $100 credit um, and, and access to a, a number of the different types of developer developer tools. Now, for most of us, you may not necessarily need to do that, but or you may not necessarily have to access all the tools. But if there is some type of um, program like Microsoft Project, uh, Microsoft Planner, uh, there, there's a whole host of different uh, uh, software that both students and instructors can access at no additional charge in here. And uh, I can uh, show you that as well here in a little bit. So let me give you guys a couple examples of how you might be able to utilize uh, some of these resources and why it's kind of actually, it could be beneficial as part of pro uh, uh, projects. Uh, Google has kind of put together, a, they've ran a, a couple of programs over the last few years where they've helped support a number of different types of, of projects in art, uh, machine learning, AI, uh, you know, just about anything. Uh, there's a lot of VR that they, and AR that they do as well. So it's really kind of just about anything that you can think of. And I'll go ahead and let uh, their little uh, commercial here speak for itself. So hopefully, sound will come through. Can you guys hear the sound? My name is Martine Sims. My name is Martine Sims. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm in my studio. I'm going to go downtown LA there. It's just quieting down because I think everyone is knocking off for evening. I have got my task cam, so I'm just going to record it anyway. I am an artist and researcher who is interested in data and large collections of information. 
my project is trying to recreate films that no longer exist using a data set of silent films from the early 20th century that I am using to train a generative adversarial network on. Sound is one of the ways that poems hold together. Nonsense Laboratory is a series of experimental interfaces for playing with spelling and phonetics. My interest lies in the spatio-temporality of sound. And that kind of information that sound carries from location to location. Akipu is a pre-Columbian rope-based device that stores information. So my idea is to make these textiles to talk, to sing, to tell stories. I like to say I make creative stuff for computers. I design and write code. The idea that I've been exploring is some form of AI oracle from the future that people can go and ask a particular question about life and it would be able to generate an answer in a form of rap. My project is called Neural Swap. I wanted to make these two entities that talk to each other. One of them uses my voice. Lately, I feel like I'm holding my breath. When I started working with machine learning a few years ago, it wasn't possible to copy my voice. Now I'm kind of able to do that. My project, Truly and Truly, is about me coming from South London, built up in rap, somehow I ended up working in the world of machine learning and creativity. For me, a machine learning model is amplifying human agency. There is a kind of collaboration, there's kind of chance involved. But so much of it is this really human part of editing and shaping and controlling the input. Very excited by the possibility of machine learning and creativity and how we can bring those two worlds together. Okay, so that is just a, a few examples over the last few years that Google's done where they've helped kind of fund these uh, uh, different um, art and, and experiments. Uh, and, and they actually kind of run these on a, on a regular basis. Uh, I think the last one that was in 2019 or 2020, well, 2020, of course, COVID hit. And so there was a lot of um, uh, a stoppage to a lot of different things. But I, I, um, my understanding is that they're looking at starting a lot of this back up. But so those are just kind of a few ideas that uh, different um, researchers, uh, facilitators around the world have kind of done with some of these uh, grants. And, and of course, there's, there's a couple other uh, examples here that I'm actually, let's see, wanted to show you here. So for example, if for some reason, and if you're if you're coming from the business uh, college, and there's there's something you wanted to be able to explain as far as data data analysis, have your students kind of walk through something uh, with uh, some type of market analysis. There's a couple different uh, resources within Google that you could use. They have two things. They have the entire resource. Uh, for the cloud resources you could utilize, which would be the whole platform that I'll show you in a second, or something called Quick Labs that they have predetermined mini courses, right? And these are very similar to like Udacity, Coursera, and so forth, right? But on a much, much smaller scale. And these are the types of courses where they'll kind of take you through or at least allow uh, a student to kind of walk through uh, individual projects. And this is uh, taken from an example, one of the example for the, uh, the big query market analysis, right? Where they're actually using live data set here, right? So this is Google's live data set for, for different types of th uh, things. And you, this doesn't require any setup other than uh, walking through the, the little projects itself and, and it will tell you exactly what to click on. And I'll show you that in, in, in a second here, right? And in this case, it can give you a data studio report. Uh, you could have students, um, uh, you know, as a, as a final uh, semester project, actually present uh, data 
based off of what they've ever been researching. And this doesn't necessarily have to be limited to market analysis, right? This could be used in uh, psychology, social work, right? Anything. Uh, so there's a couple uh, different options where you can even have students upload their own data and their own data set, right? But then there's also uh, using stuff like uh, uh, GCP, they give you access to a lot of publicly accessible data. I mean, just terabytes worth of data. Uh, so th these are just kind of a, a couple ideas or that you could utilize and I'll show you here in, in, in a second. Um, I just wanted to give you a couple ideas to kind of think about. So even if, you know, I was, when I was kind of um, planning for this, I was thinking, well, who, who, who here w would probably be most of the audience? And, and I didn't want it to, to, to focus on computer science or business alone, right? And I wanted to show that actually, if you're in math or English, you could actually utilize these uh, resources as well. So depending on uh, on what you wanted to do, and, and please, by no means, am I saying that you have to utilize these examples, but I just wanted to provide some type. So in many cases, there's there is a um, there's an AIML uh, project that Google is working on one of the Google experiments where they actually uh, do poetry, right? Or in this case, this is phonics, right? And, and I will definitely give you guys all access, links to these. So if you want to take a look at these later and kind of go through them. Um, but in this case, there's little phonics and actually you put it in there, it spells it out and you can, and there's an audio return as well. So you can actually hear it. Uh, there's uh, a, another example here where they are, are actually going through documenting languages, right? Uh, looking at languages that are, um, are uh, not very, uh, uh, or I guess what they call endangered, right? In, in many cases, right? So they're, they're trying to, uh, to help document with stuff like that. And in other cases, if you're working with math, if you wanted to do a bit of um, uh, experiments with different types of formulas, calculations, uh, you could actually set up uh, what we call collaboratory under Google. This is, these are very similar to Jupyter Notebooks, if you're familiar with those or, or not. But you could actually get enough credits for like Google to actually set up your own laboratory where you could give students access to uh, these can be done within uh, the Google Drive uh, environment. Uh, so these, there's no cost to any of these. These are kind of quite simple uh, to set up. Uh, and you see here, I, I just kind of pulled a, a couple of other examples where, where they use like Matplot and stuff like that for the data science aspect. So again, these are just a couple of examples and, and I'll show you a few more here uh, in the environment in a second. Uh, for social sciences, one of, uh, one of the examples here, and this is kind of through their quick labs here, they have stuff like predicting baby weight using TensorFlow AI platforms, right? So, you know, so there's, again, just a couple of different uh, examples here of what you could have students walk through. In this case, uh, Here's an hour and a half, estimated hour and a half, depending on how long uh, it takes us to do. Sometimes it could be a bit faster or it may take them a little bit longer. These are all self-paced uh, quick labs. But you could have them walk through this example and then you could actually set up uh, a simple environment in Google and then have them do and, and so, so manipulate a similar type of a data set. And then, so let's actually uh, go ahead and look at the environment here. So let me post this in here. Like I said, and I will make sure everyone gets uh, uh, access to the links here. I'll get those to Daniel. We can get those out uh, or even published on the, on the website. So here is the Google Cloud Higher Education Program. They have a whole list here. Uh, 
definitely look through it. Take, take your time to look through it. Uh, there's a, a number of different things that you can kind of go through here. So students will register uh, or will get access based off of any uh, faculty member uh, requesting access to this. Um, so faculty have to kind of do this first uh, to, to participate in this particular part of the program. Uh, students, there's some other resources that they can uh, utilize. Uh, in many cases, Google gives anyone, I think somewhere between one and $200 for the year uh, on a um, uh, non-student basis. And that's typically what they'll kind of default for the students. Uh, in this case, that I think does require them to have a credit card file because they're utilizing a, um, a kind of a personal access. Um, that's why it's important for faculty uh, to request uh, access to credits, because in this case, what happens is there's a there's a very specific um, course that, um, class list that they'll set up and they'll give credits to every single student that's a part of that course. And in that case, the students, all they have to do is just click on links. Uh, they'll verify through this, their uh, St. Leo email account. Um, the, and then from there, they can utilize any account. So even if it attaches to a personal account or uh, a non-personal account, it's perfectly fine. Uh, Google doesn't care at that point, but they have to verify that they're a student first. So that's why they have to utilize uh, uh, their St. Leo email. But in that case, they all get $50 credit. Whereas a... Um, a faculty member will get $100 out of this uh, to utilize, and that's so that they can set up different environments. Um, they could do uh, really any kind of th uh, thing that they need within limits, as long as it's just not abused. Uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, organization, a lot of uh, th there are some re <laughs> there are some uh, researchers out there that uh, do kind of uh, um, uh, abuse it. And so they're very cautious because they do monitor uh, the usage rate. Uh, so they'll give you all that in their, in their little breakdown once you go, go to register. And I'll show you here in a second. Another thing that Google tends to offer is uh, the researchers. So if you have some type of a research project, and let's say you're doing a research project as a um, as a, uh, a self-study, a director study, or even a capstone project, uh, or something you're doing specifically with one or two students, and it may be related to an actual study, and it could be IRB or something like that, you can actually request, if I remember correctly, and we'll see it here in a second, up to $5,000 in credits. And they'll give you access to some of their, their top line resources to, to conduct uh, whatever you know, uh, analysis you may need for your specific study. Right. Uh, so from the educator perspective, uh, it's just as simple as clicking on, on, on apply. Uh, they give you a whole host of different uh, uh, topics, uh, resources that you can kind of uh, go through and utilize. Uh, they give you a couple different ideas. They even provide some slides uh, for you to uh, kind of uh, utilize for yourself as well as within the course. None of, there's no cost to any of this, right? This is something that Google uh, supports uh, 100%. Uh, like I said, each of them uh, provide uh, different types of, um, like even in this case, they have, um, uh, career readiness programs or, or courses that are specifically designed for each, uh, each of these topic areas. Uh, let's see, from the researcher perspective, right? And that's in there and you see here, uh, you submit a proposal, uh, they can, um, approve it if, it, if it's, if they see it as a, as a worthy uh, cause, and, and they'll give you a, a, a up to $5,000 uh, 
and access to the resources, which actually can get quite expensive depending on what you uh, do and utilize. And again, uh, even if you don't necessarily need those uh, $5,000 uh, credits uh, for research, there they also have other access, which I'll show you here in a second for the quick labs. And the quick labs are essentially everything that I was kind of showing you a bit earlier. And there's just a number of different types of uh, courses that you can kind of step through. Um, let's see, I'll expand that up a bit more. Is there something interesting anyone would like to see? Um, these are a lot of the featured learning fundamentals. Here's the entire catalog. Let's take a look at, we'll, we'll just kind of look at the cloud essentials. And for some of you guys, you may have uh, noticed that the last few weeks, there were some student facilitators who were actually running a, uh, a, a GCP course here or a program. And this facilitator program utilized this quick labs, but you can actually get up to 5,000 credits and you could divvy this out to your class. So, and you actually can keep track of, of uh, what students are doing, what they're completing, and then um, uh, have them work on these in in a actual in classroom environment uh, for for just kind of in any type of experiential type of uh, uh, learning. So uh, one that I might recommend everyone do is is kind of a quick tour. You see that in this particular one, it doesn't cost anything. It's 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 free to set up. You'll see here that all of them uh, will provide an idea of how much that particular lab will cost. And in this case, it's a credit, and they typically go up in price <clears throat> depending on the type of resources <clears throat> that you're going to use. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, a lot of your data analysis and uh, machine learning will, will typically require a significant uh, amount of, um, of credit. But that's why Google provides uh, the faculty an opportunity uh, to get up to 5,000 credits, or I think it was 5,000. And then you can um, use that as a bucket and divvy that out. But what's kind of nice is that you actually can set it up to where they all have to utilize their St. Leo email address in that. Uh, just like any organization, uh, you could uh, filter out the specific emails uh, so that it helps kind of keep track of everything. Um, <clears throat> as an example, this is kind of one of the things that I have, even at my uh, uh, computer systems, my uh, uh, fundamentals, course, I may have them walk through uh, these little activities here, just even going through the, uh, the simple uh, quick lab here so that they understand uh, what's going on here. Let me sign in. And you'll see what's nice is that it gives them kind of a, a step walkthrough. They just follow the instructions through. Uh, Kind of answer a couple questions. Not every every lab here offers uh, questions and answers, uh, but it uh, but some of them do. And so as long as they walk through everything, uh, this is a really good environment for students to kind of play around in. There's nothing they can damage uh, because it's it's all limited to their specific uh, uh, sandbox. Uh, and then one 
other thing I wanted to show here. So Tableau. Tableau kind of does the same thing as what uh, Google does. Uh, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with Tableau to some degree. You may have used it at some point. Uh, they have a number of different types of resources as well. Uh, there's a number of blogs that they consistently post, uh, giving you examples of how to utilize uh, their, uh, their, uh, their system, how to maybe utilize it in, their, in a course. Uh, so, you know, th these are a number of different kind of resources that they provide as well. There is also, and again, I'll give you guys all the links to these, where you can request um, uh, individual licenses uh, for yourself. Uh, the students can request individual licenses at no charge. There are instructor licenses. There are bulk licenses that you can get uh, and that can be installed on um, uh, lab computers. Uh, one of the things that I'm working on is, is actually we have a license for, this, for the school. Um, we don't have a server set up for it yet, but you could utilize, you could utilize like GCP credits, uh, and actually uh, set up a, um, a, a Tableau server if you really wanted to. But one of the really nice things that Tableau does is they actually provide you an online site. And that way you're not even using any of the, the St. Leo resources or anything like that. It, it's just setting up, it, it's all web-based, web-based GUI, and you just add uh, emails. Uh, so you just add all the student emails to that. So <clears throat> these are just a, a couple ideas that you could utilize uh, if you wanted to do more data analysis and it wasn't specific to uh, Google. Uh, that's just kind of one option. Um, and then of course, one of the other options I wanted to talk about and let you guys know is that we've actually just become um, a Microsoft Learn for Educator partner. And what's kind of nice about this is that anyone at the school can actually uh, enroll and participate in this uh, th through the computer science department. And they give you access to a, a number of um, uh, of uh, resources here that you could actually take and and add to your to your class as well. And this is everything from uh, stuff like um, uh, Microsoft Certified Dynamics uh, to uh, basic secu security compliance, uh, identity fundamentals. Mind you, most of this is probably business and computer science related, uh, but you don't have to be in, uh, in, in computer science to utilize, to, to utilize these resources, right? So if there's something that you wanted to be able to talk about and you wanted uh, your students to, to have some type of um, uh, interaction, you can utilize uh, these resources. Um, that is... kind of it for that. I guess at this point, I'm, I'm willing to answer any questions anyone might have. Do you guys like to uh, see something on the GCP side? Uh, yeah, could actually, if you, can you just walk through an example? Because it's not uh, of, of, 
Yeah, anything of your choice would be great. Um, uh, yeah, and so what this does is, um, you know, sort of, uh, I'm, I'm anticipating that I can go explore this, but could somebody yeah. put in like uh, in the chat how we would access these resources as well? Yeah, I'm gonna uh, get you guys all links. Uh, I can actually just go ahead and start pasting them all in the chat if that's what you'd like. Yeah. Josh, let me give you an idea of some of the faculty who are here, and then you might be able to talk to their, speak to their specific content yeah. areas, how they might be able to use it. So we have uh, one English uh, faculty member, we have a science faculty member, we have three or four education faculty members, someone in criminal justice, um, we've got uh, someone in the bridge program. Um, Victoria, I cannot recall what your um, content Social area work. is. Social Thank you. Work. Thank you. Uh, I think that covers uh, who's here today. So maybe you could speak, give a few examples of some of those uh, disciplines. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's what I tried to do. I, I guess I didn't do as eloquently as I possibly could have. Um, the, so like, let me post these examples in here. I think that will help as well. And, um, and Josh, the faculty member who asked the question, Chris Miller is a science faculty member. Yeah, so, so for, so if, if I can, I'll, I'll take the science uh, for, uh, first. So if there's, and I don't want to pretend uh, to, to know exactly what everyone is, you know, teaching or providing within their courses, right, because it's very, a lot of this could be so per, you know, very, very individualized, you know, personalized for each kind of course and, or, or uh, even class. And so I, I don't want to presume to tell you what you can and can't do. I just want to give you a, a kind of general ideas. And so like in science, if there's something that you perhaps needed to talk about that it was related to, um, uh, you know, uh, chemical, uh, chemical uh, calculations, bonding, or, or if there's some type of um, uh, formula, you could utilize like uh, co-laboratory. So it, it, in that case, um, in that one example that I, um, that I had, I might set up a, a GCP um, uh, VM which is actually kind of nice here because uh, you don't have to have a whole lot of experience. And that's what one of the things I'm actually going to pull up right now. I'll post this link in here. So if you were wanting to, you could set up a, uh, a VM and GCP and actually create a uh, kind of like a Jupyter notebook, which would be Google's um, uh, version of uh, that being the collaboratory here is my document. Share my screen again. So like, this is an example of what you would see on GCP's uh, end if you were working in uh, this particular environment. And they have access to this marketplace here. And this marketplace, if in sciences, uh, you wanted to do something, you could actually utilize any of these as part of the credits, right? Uh, so you have a $100 credit, if you had a TA, you get another $100. And what's nice is that if you 
are going to run out of credits, you could actually request more and, and Google um, uh, typically has no problem providing additional credits for, for instructors. Um, you can utilize any of these, everything from uh, virtual machines uh, to, to financial services. And, and a lot of these are self-contained one-click type of systems. So for, uh, for example, if I needed to set up a virtual machine and I wanted to run some type of an analysis or, or um, it, it, for science, I, I could actually have them do that in here. And it doesn't require a whole host of knowledge because Google kind of does that on the end. Um, let's say uh, data sets. Let's say if there's something in sciences, data sets, look at everything you have. So there's health sciences, look at all their uh, COVID-19 public data sets that you have access to, right? You have access to uh, Center for Medicaid. Uh, you can even do Bitcoin. Um, you know, so all of this, uh, you can have access to it. like here's a good example you have clown to ground uh lighting uh excuse me lightning do you guys uh, see this is it too small is that so this really is left up to your imagination how you want to present whatever it is that you want to present I'm around and I'm available for, for everyone. So if there's ever something that you want to be able to do and you have questions on how to go about setting it up, I am more than happy to have a conversation with you and, and help you uh, set up whatever you, you might want to set up. But not just that, Google will also help as well. So if you do have questions and specific questions, they can kind of help you out with that as well. Um, if for some reason you there's something in, in in english right maybe you want students to write personal blogs or something like that right um there is an option in here uh where you could actually have them uh, establish a, a wordpress blog right and there's no cost to this. It's in a lot of this can be done in a, in a one click kind of a setup. So for example, one of the things I did in uh, uh, computer science uh, for the fundamentals, and these are students that have no experience with any of this, right? Um, they may come through and uh, will utilize maybe this WordPress, uh, uh, for example. And if I click on that, all I need to do is click launch here. Uh, I name a couple different things, right? Uh, so well, there's certain naming schemes that you have to do. Be careful, we'll just do that. You see here, it actually shows how much this entire software as a service, uh, platform as a service might actually cost, right? Uh, so maybe perhaps you're also wanting them to, uh, you know, think uh, sustainability financially, right? Uh, this kind of gives them a good estimate. A lot of this stuff you can leave uh, defaulted, especially in these, in these kind of one, uh, one step. Um, and there's not much else you have to, you have to really do. And then it's just a matter of clicking deploy in this case, uh, giving it a couple minutes. Uh, and then next thing you know, it once this generates, and I'll show you here in a, in a second, once it generates up. <clears throat> We're waiting for this type of an address here. Once these uh, addresses, uh, populate, then uh, students can actually go in. Uh, like in this case, I don't know if, if a lot of you are familiar with WordPress or not, but you know that's one of those content management systems. And you could think of it as just a, um, a very complex blog, right? Rather than a, um, or a very complex web page, website. Now, the only thing I'm, only issue I tend to run into on campus is that sometimes the IP address is blocked. Uh, and something happened here. Why did that happen? Uh -oh. 
Gotcha. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this once this comes up. And in this case, uh, what I did one semester here is I actually had the, the computer science uh, students um, document their semester. And they would just document on what they did, what they learned. And in this case, it didn't require a whole lot of uh, knowledge of website design or coding. Right, because this is a, a WordPress, and in, in this case, was just kind of a, a software as a service, and they could just click and drag and and type, right? And so it, it simplified uh, things a lot more. There we go. All right. So let's see, for example, that pops up. And so you see just that just that little bit right there and I didn't have to go through the whole steps of actually um, understanding or knowing how to set up an entire uh, system, but in this case I could go in the back end and, and do whatever so. Um, it, who, who else do we have here that might want an example did that did those examples help at all. Yeah, interesting, Josh. I, I just went to the one of the links you gave us on the cloud Google and plugged in criminal justice. And it's fascinating the different data sets that are available through there. Um, the, the first one was the Criminal Justice Information Services Division of the FBI's uh, mm -hmm. the data sets. And then um, I, there's just all sorts of fascinating stuff uh, just yeah. from that. And I don't know anything about criminal justice, but I was just curious what there might be there. Yeah, I was looking at it too. <laughs> right, right. And so my, my point is, is that all of these resources are there and you don't necessarily have to know or understand much about the cloud resource cloud environment. Um, they're, they're available uh, even, even Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure provides uh, some uh, resources and some tips on how to uh, talk about their content you know, one of the biggest things I wanted to stress is that, you know, don't don't think you have to have, uh, you know, 100% comfortability or with knowledge of, of the cloud environment to, to utilize these. But I, 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 I speaking from that computer science in 20 years in, in, in the military, this is where a lot of industry, every field, uh, is, is kind of going. Uh, let's see, let me post a couple other links in there uh, for you guys as well. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, see, even Daniel posted in there for the AR VR group. Um, there, there's really no limitation on what you could utilize the resources for. It's up to you and your imagination on how you want to present uh, the concepts that you want to present in your course. Okay. Any other examples? Anybody wants to see? 
here's Quick Labs. Yeah, I, you know, I, I wish I could say that, um, that they have kind of one of these uh, solutions where, where everything's there uh, for you and you can kind of just take it off the shelf and, and um, uh, use it. Because it does, because I know, I get it, we're all, we're definitely all busy, right? We've got a lot of things going on. But I feel that these provide such a, um, a unique way to have uh, students actually interact, um, you know, and, and, pro and really kind of reflect on on the concepts that they're learning. Um, another good example might be that if you're, you know, in English, if you wanted to do natural language processing, for example, you could you could um, you could utilize uh, uh, Google's or Azure's. AI and, and uh, uh, ML um, environments to be able to actually do some type of natural language processing. Well, Josh, thank you very much for your Good. time. Yeah. And if anybody else has any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. There's a, we still have some time here, but anybody have, go ahead, Chris. Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, uh, I, like somebody else put in a chat, it, I think it's a good time to like explore. Cause I, I think that's just what, what we just have to do. We have to just kind of like the balls in our court and now we go play around right. and look, see what's there. Right, you know, I was, as I was preparing for this, like I said, I could have just gone through, but I didn't want to presume to, to, you know, tell everyone, oh, this is how you should do it, right? Um, I wanted you guys to really um, know that this is available and that there's no cost to any of this. And that if you need uh, any assistance, uh, walkthrough or anything like that, um, you know, I'm, I'm available. I'm always willing, willing to help. Um, another interesting thing that we actually just got um, set up as a, at least the computer science side, we just uh, set up a CERTA port center. So we are now a registered CERTA port center through, and, and a lot of this Azure, we're actually partnered with Carnegie Mellon University on. And so we've are now set up as a center port center via Carnegie Mellon and Microsoft so that uh, there's a lot of the Microsoft products that we can now provide certifications for for uh, about $10 a, uh, an exam for the students. Uh, and that includes everything from um, uh, like Power BI. Uh, so if if you're in business and you in marketing analysis, you wanted students to do Power BI, uh, they could take uh, Power BI uh, certification and get it for ten dollars. Uh, same thing with uh, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, fundamentals, and stuff like that. So, how do we access those, Josh? Those the certifications. Uh huh. Yeah, so that is going to be through uh, the the second uh, Azure uh, uh, program, and I will. You'll have what you have to do for that is you will that is for this one. Let me. That is for this resource here. I'll put the, the link in the email. This one is very specific because it's it's a unique one through um, Carnegie. So you'll have to email me. And then I will send your name and email address over to the um, to the facilitator at Microsoft, and they'll place you under our group, um, the computer science group, and then you can utilize um, 
any of the resources in there, right? Uh, it comes with training resources. The only thing they want out of that is a survey. They want to they want to know what uh, students are uh, are learning and, and how it's being utilized. And if any of you are interested, they do give faculty um, the uh, they give faculty a one time credit for their own certification. So if you as a faculty are interested in Power BI or something like that, they, you can you can take the exam at no cost. But because uh, that one is a unique one, you have to email me and I can get you set up. Great, thank you. Okay, I, I hope I didn't waste anyone's time today. I hope you, I hope you uh, at least got something out of it. Uh, I definitely appreciate everyone uh, being here. Josh, we appreciate you and your time and uh, your expertise and uh, want to echo what was put out in the chat and thank you for your willingness to collaborate with your peers and help everyone discover how they can use these things to support learning and teaching in their courses. I think it's uh, it's definitely something that's piqued some interest and I hope folks will take advantage of the, the resources that are available. Happy to Before you leave. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Okay. Before you leave, um, everyone, thank you again, Josh, um, for your your time and for this information. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, as Daniel mentioned in the beginning, we do have a short survey we'd like for you to complete. The link is in the chat. Um, please go ahead and complete that at your convenience. Um, it should take you no more than five minutes, and there's only a few questions for you, maybe about like eight. So we'd appreciate that. And thank you again. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. And thank you, all people at CTLE. Too. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time and hope everyone's having a great start to their summer and you continue to have a productive and restful summer throughout. Yeah. We will go ahead and close the meeting here in just a moment and we'll see everyone else next time yeah josh thank you so much for the time that you took to prepare for this and try to you know show different examples and just your willingness to work with faculty is just awesome i i think it's kind of like I, I know for me uh, okay so this is you know just our conversations about today's uh um base camp and then your presentation today it's this is new for me so i'm kind of processing and thinking and then i you know as several people have commented you know we need to just surf around now and explore and see what's out there and try to you know think about our own disciplines and okay well what what data could i use in my discipline what should i be looking at what trends in my discipline should i be looking at so i think it's a you know i think we're all just kind of deer in the headlights just taking it all in and trying to wrap our head around the possibilities Right. No, that's exactly it. And and again, I just didn't. That's why I was kind of limited on that on that initial presentation because really, it's it's up to you. I want you guys to be creative in what you do and how to mm -hmm. utilize the resource. Yeah. yeah, but your willingness to you know follow up with faculty is extraordinary. I mean that you know that's a really that's a gift to our faculty to be willing yeah. to you know if I come to you with an idea like. You know, okay, I'm teaching this. I'm thinking about this kind of data. Where could I find that, or how could I do oh, that? Absolutely, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. We have to be able to help each other with those things. If not, it's the same thing, right? Well, everyone have a great afternoon and Josh, thank you so much again. We really, really appreciate it. And this is um, the, the attendance at this base camp is like awesome. Uh, and so I, I think there's a definitely an interest and we appreciate you doing our first summer base camp. We were hesitant about doing them in the summer because we really didn't know whether folks would come or not. So um, we appreciate you being our first. Okay, no, no problem. I hope I didn't uh, sour it. For <laughs> oh, not at all. 
No, no, I really think people are thinking, you know, it's just, we're, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's just so new. So we don't have things to hang it on. And so we're trying to, you know, figure out what this means for us, each of us, but there's definitely an interest. Yeah, I actually just posted the, the, the curriculum, uh, the Microsoft certification curriculum that we're allowed to uh, teach under that sort of board. So you, I posted that in the, um, in the chat. So if you want to take that. And then Candace, let me know how you want all the links or, some, or I can just email them, I guess, if you need them all, if you want to post them. Well, um, Daniel will be the one to follow up with you since he's yeah. been um, been our contact person for this. So um, I'll I'll leave that to him. Sure. Yeah. Josh, if you want to just send me a link of, you know, if just like a shot sheet of everything that you want posted sure. or available to the masses, I'll send an email to the folks who registered for this meeting, but we'll also put it on the uh, faculty spotlight web page okay. so that, that they're housed somewhere on the website as well. Okay. All right, thanks. Perfect. Great. All right, well, we'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye, everybody.